Dr. Khalid Malik, the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups, has a PhD in Applied Linguistics TESOL and uploaded this video for BS English students. Having more than 25 research papers, he also taught at many foreign universities. He was presently admitted to a postdoctoral study at a Canadian university. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com slash at 1966 Pakistani or use a QR code to join our Facebook group at Grammatical Genders Grammatical Gender Definition Grammatical gender is a noun class system composed of two or three classes whose nouns that have human male and female reference tend to be in separate classes. Other nouns that are classified in the same way in the language may not be classed by any correlation with natural sex distinctions. Kinds Feminine gender Masculine gender Neuter gender Gender is a grammatical feature, in a family with person, number, and case. In the languages that have grammatical gender, according to a representative typological sample, almost half of the languages in the world, it is a property that separates nouns into classes. These classes are often meaningful and often linked to biological sex, which is why many languages are said to have a masculine and a feminine gender. A typical example is Italian, which has masculine words for male persons, Illinois Bambino, the dot M little boy, and feminine words for female persons, La Bambina, the dot F little girl. However, gender systems may be based on other semantic distinctions or may reflect formal properties of the noun. In all cases, the defining property is agreement, the behavior of associated words. In Italian, the masculine gender of the noun bambino matches its meaning as well as its form, the noun ends in o and inflects like a regular o-class noun, but the true indicator of gender is the form of the article. This can be seen in words like la mano, the dot f hand, which is feminine despite its final o, and Illinois soprano, the dot m soprano, which is masculine, although it usually refers to a woman. For the same reasons, we speak of grammatical gender only if the distinction is reflected in syntax. A language that has words for male and female persons or animals does not necessarily have a gender system. Across the languages of the world, gender systems vary widely. They differ in the number of classes, in the underlying assignment rules, and in how and where gender is marked. Since agreement is a definitional property, Gender is generally absent in isolating languages as well as in young languages with little bound morphology, including sign languages. Therefore, gender is considered a mature phenomenon in language. Gender interacts in various ways with other grammatical features. For example, it may be limited to the singular number or the third person, and it may be crosscut by case distinctions. These and other interrelations can complicate the task of figuring out a gender system in first or second language acquisition. Yet, children master gender early, making use of a broad variety of cues. By contrast, gender is famously difficult for second language learners. This is especially true for adults and for learners whose first language does not have a gender system. Nevertheless, tests show that even for this group, native like competence is possible to attain. Grammatical gender is a system in the grammar of some languages in which nouns are classified as belonging to a certain gender, often masculine, feminine, or neuter, and other parts of speech connected to the noun, such as adjectives or articles, must agree. For example, in English, nouns with natural gender, such as boy or girl, must agree in gender with any pronouns used to represent them. Therefore, she is a nice boy is ungrammatical in English. Other languages around the world have much more extensive and complex systems of gender. In many languages, grammatical gender and natural gender correlate rather loosely, much to the frustration of second language learners. In French and Spanish, every noun is either masculine or feminine, so things that would seem to lack gender to an English speaker are assigned to one or the other class. In such languages, grammatical gender is often more morphological, related to the sound of the word, than semantic, related to its meaning. 
In Spanish, for example, words ending in O are typically masculine and words ending in A are typically feminine. One example of a word with a gender that differs from its natural gender is the German Mädchen, or Maiden, which is grammatically classified as neuter rather than feminine. Grammatical gender is a system in the grammar of some languages in which nouns are classified as belonging to a certain gender. In some grammars, including those of many Native American and African languages, gender may refer to distinctions other than masculine and feminine. Many languages, for example, assign grammatical gender according to the categories animate and inanimate. Languages of the Caucasian family often have four genders, feminine, masculine, animate, and inanimate. Again, non-native speakers often find these grammatical distinctions unexpected, heavenly bodies and plants may be considered animate in some languages. Grammatical gender, for the most part, follows enough basic patterns that one can make an educated guess as to the gender of an unknown word, but some degree of memorization is typically necessary. In English, nouns with natural gender like boy or girl must agree within gender with any pronouns used. More unusual systems of grammatical gender can be found around the world. Diabol, an Australian Aboriginal language, notoriously includes a gender category for women, fire, and dangerous things. Some languages have genders based on the physical shapes of objects, and some languages have over 10 noun classes. Grammatical genders in different languages. When speaking of grammatical genders, one might wonder what grammar has to do with sex. Not much, to be honest. The original meaning of gender was race, type, or kind. As a matter of fact, gender has the same origin as genre and genus. But then, the Greek philosophers decided to complicate things once again and started using the noun genos, type, or race, to refer to one specific division of things into three types, males, humans and animals, females and inanimate objects. From Greek, this passed on to Latin and consequently to other European languages, including Old English. Old English was a highly inflected language, which means that besides the four cases, nominative, genitive, dative and accusative, two numbers, singular, plural, and three grammatical genders, feminine, masculine, neuter, were visible inflections on nouns, adjectives and determiners. However, there was a general transformation of the English language from Old to Middle English that contributed towards the gradual reduction of the inflectional system on nouns, adjectives and determiners. Grammatical genders vanished and natural genders, i.e. the gender to which a noun or pronoun would be expected to belong based on relevant attributes of its referent, developed. Genders on Old English nouns were often not determined by meaning sometimes even in contradiction with their meaning and were therefore troublesome, e.g. wife was neuter, whilst woman was masculine, note, woman derives from the Old English word withman, literally woman human being, and in Old English the gender was assigned to the last element of the compound, in this instance man. Modern languages vary greatly within their gender system. Only one-fourth of the world's languages have a system of noun classification. Languages such as Finnish, Hungarian, Estonian, Turkish, Indonesian and Vietnamese, to name just a few, do not have grammatical genders at all. Other languages have a gender distinction based on animacy, the distinction between animate beings, humans and animals of both sexes, and inanimate objects. Yet other languages differentiate between human and non-human, animals and inanimate things, whilst others draw a much more specific line. The Australian language Nongichimeri is said to have up to 15 genders, including masculine human, feminine human, vegetables, drinks, canines, non-canine animals and two different genders for spears. Other logical genders like this can be found in Tamil, where three genders exist, masculine, feminine and neuter. Here it is straightforward, men and male gods belong to the masculine group, women and goddess are feminine and everything else including animals and objects are neuter. However, grammatical genders do not always make sense. Only a handful of languages actually group together objects with similar vital properties. The majority of languages are inconsistent and not transparent, e.g. 
French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, German, Russian, Dutch, Swedish, Norwegian, Danish, Polish, Czech and Greek. Nevertheless, a core group of nouns is usually assigned to a certain grammatical gender in a consistent way. Male human beings are almost always assigned to the masculine gender, whereas women are often denied belonging to the feminine gender. For instance, in German, das Mädchen, the girl, is neuter, as well as das Fräulein, unmarried woman, and das Weib, woman, cognate with English, wife. But the real confusion starts when we look at inanimate objects, a Frenchman's beard is feminine, la bulb, the Russian water is feminine, but when you have dipped a tea bag inside her, she becomes masculine. The grammatical genders of German cutlery are hilarious, too, das Messer, the knife, is an it, but der Loffel, the spoon, with his hairy chest is masculine, whilst die Gable, the fork, represents a feminine figure. And in Spanish it is the opposite, the spoon, la cuchara, is feminine and the fork, el tender, masculine. Another peculiar example is the African language supiaia, which has five genders, humans, small things, big things, collectives and liquids. The gender big things includes, as you probably would have expected, all the big animals, giraffe, hippopotamus, horse, etc. But one animal was not considered big enough and was assigned to the human class, the elephant. But as one wise man once said, the problem is not how to find more such examples, it is how to stop. One final thought, though, gender markers do not always appear exclusively on nouns. They can also appear on adjectives and articles, which is common, but astonishingly in some Slavic languages, a suffix, a is added to some verbs when the subject is feminine. Are you a native English speaker that experienced the joy of learning a second language in school? Tell us about your experiences learning the grammatical gender system in a foreign language. Join our Facebook Applied Linguistics group or comment on our YouTube channel. Dr. Khalid Malik, the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups, has a PhD in Applied Linguistics TESOL and uploaded this video for BS English students. Having more than 25 research papers, he also taught at many foreign universities. He was presently admitted to a postdoctoral study at a Canadian university. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com slash at 1966 Pakistani or use a QR code to join our Facebook group at